guys, I'm so excited for this call this Monday. I'm just so proud of you for being on this call Monday at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time because it's summer for a lot of us. It's week two for us. And um, we know that you're making this a priority in your life and you are sh like you're walking the talk. And that's everything because you doing that, you showing up, people are going to see and they're going to follow. Um, maybe you did. You, it's a simple text and shoot a text to people in your downline because they don't know about the call. So just saying, hey, I think this call will be of value to you. Please go ahead and get on. Um, we're excited, you know, whatever. That might be something that you need to do. Not all the time because they need to be in the group and be what I like to say is paying attention to these things um, that are happening every Monday. So today's call is about mindset and having a winning mindset. Um, I have a lot of different notes here from John Maxwell. Um, Julie is going to be sharing as well, just some awesome things. And she has a really good, um, plan of action for you guys at the end of the call. I'm so excited for it. Uh, because that's what we all need. Like, how do we put this into practice? How are we going to put this into action? So, um, the greatest gap between successful and unsuccessful people is mindset. And in the beginning of this call, I just want Julie and I to share some things that have happened with ourselves so that you guys can feel better in your lives because it helps me so much to hear from successful people who've gone before me to say, hey, I've had people say, I want to get started and then ghost me for seven years. I have had people, uh, recently I had a, a girl who hasn't had a launch party yet. She said, you know, actually my biggest fear is that I'm going to invite people and no one shows up. Guilty. I've had probably 50 launch parties where no one has come. We call them secret launch parties. Julie, have you had those? Yeah. In fact, I had so many secret launch parties that a girl on my team, we're going to talk about mindset today. And I think this is really important. A girl on my team actually said to me, I'm going to stop inviting you to my launch parties, Julie, because I had gotten into the frame of mind that no one was going to show. And she was feeling that energy from me. And she was like, I'm not, I'm just not going to invite you, Julie, anymore. And she now does launch parties on her own all the time. And I do launch parties that people do show, but I want you, that's like such a good example of the mindset. Your mindset is impacting not only the success of your launch party, but the success of other people on your team or within the group that are making the decision whether they should do it or not based on what you think. Yeah, and as a leader, so I did it, my first launch party, I think I invited like 20 people, three people came, um, which was, a, oh my gosh, like a total shock to me, because I was like, no one's gonna come, This my upline was driving four hours to be at my thing, and I was like, oh my gosh, I don't wanna let her down. So I was shocked that three people even came, but, um, and had they not come because I didn't get that belief from my upline, um, I probably would have quit. So I think as leaders, it is our job to project, you know, people will show eventually, um, but to project that it's okay if no one shows to the first ones, but you need to invite a crap ton of people. It's not gonna be those five people and all five people are gonna show and all five people are gonna enroll. That's not gonna have, like, we need to have reality. But also bringing in that, that um, belief level in them and like, it's okay and you can do this and it's going to take time and it's not the right time for them. And, you know, it, they'll come around eventually, but you have to have people who know about it, know you're in, in the business or open for business. Um, what else? I've had people um, block me on Facebook. Look, I've had girl, a, texted a girl because I was like, hey, do you want me to keep you in the loop with deals going on? She said, yes. I kept her in the loop and she's like, please never text me ever again. Cool. That was a hard one to swallow. Um, I have had family members still to this day, never, ever, 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 ever try the product. Never, ever, ever sign up with me. Um, my brother, he loves free product. My brother is awesome and eats the product, but said he will never give me referrals because he doesn't like the way that I do this. Okay. <laughs> but he would love my money. That's the thing. He's like, well, I'd like some of your money. Okay. You know, so I, I, we hear these things, like, what have you gotten, Julie, that's been ridiculous, but like, so normal? Yeah, so Dan, actually, my husband Dan, actually, just last week, he was posting in like a buy sell page. And you guys, I could not get over the hate that was being thrown away because he was trying to offer somebody a solution. And it 
prompted a really great discussion actually between us because the thing is, is people will always not understand what you're doing. They may, may never understand the, the, the place of service that you come from, but you have to persevere because people need us. And there are, I mean, I could think of so many examples. I mean, some of my very best friends in the world that, you know, my husband overheard, like having a snotty conversation about what we're doing our family members that haven't not only haven't done it, but like have been outwardly against us, you know, like it is just a part of it. But I always go back to people face this anytime they're trying to make change, anytime they're trying to, and, and I was actually at an event and it was the first time I was at a personal development event where I really had this aha moment where the speaker said, when your family isn't supporting you or your friends aren't supporting you, it's because their only history of you is you before you doing whatever it is that you're doing now. And that they are holding on to that version of you. And you've moved past it and they haven't grown with you, okay? So like that's such a good reminder too of like also not harboring resentment or bitterness or anger towards those people because they're just holding on to the person that you were. And there's nothing wrong with that. They will walk through the journey either with you or beside you, or they won't understand it. And they'll love you from where you were five, 10 years ago, whatever that looks like for you. And you have to love them back for that and not take it as they're not supporting me, but more of they're not fully understanding my growth journey. And this just isn't for them. Exactly. And they too, like, especially parents are so afraid that you are going to, it's like this, this fear is guiding them and the fear is just preparing you. It's like, it's like fight or flight. Like, no, don't do that. I know someone who, whatever, like with anything in life as a parent, a loving parent. So knowing the heart space of where that may be coming from is, is truly out of love. And they just don't want to see you hurting. And so this whole mindset thing is going to help you with less hurting and to bless and release and to not have expectation with people. So, um, the very first thing I want to say is you've got to invest. We were just talking about this. You've got to invest in your mindset. So growth matters with mindset. If you do not, if you're not willing to grow, your mindset is going to stay the same and you, that, that's insanity, right? That's a definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again, expecting different, resu different results. You have to be investing in your mindset. So, and there are free things that you can do with this, like reading books. And I actually have a few that I'm going to recommend right now um, that have helped me in this journey. Um, and the number one thing I would say is knowing your worth and you're worthy of more income, of abundance in your life. And that's gonna be the book, um, Secrets of the Millionaire Mind by T. Harv Eker. So if you haven't read it or if you have, read it again um, to just up-level yourself and know that you are worthy of executive, you're worthy of running a multi-million dollar business with Isogenics. So that's the first one. The next one, of course, Go, Go Pro by Eric Worre. It's going to help you with the skills. Um, but Go For No is another great one that I, I just give this out to my team members. Go For No. It really helps your, it retrains your mindset on the word no. And that it, it, it's actually a good thing and you're closer to the yes. So no, Go For No is great for that retraining your mindset on the, hearing the word no. Um, the Four Agreements is another awesome one. It really helps you realize, you know, <laughs> not to take offense when people tell you no, or not to take offense when people tell you never text me again or whatever. Um, it, it's such a great book. And I would go in, into it with an open mind. Um, I love the book, You Are a Badass by Jen Sincero. This one's the badass at making money. This one's a great one as well. Um, but You Are a Badass. And then 13 Things Mentally Strong People Don't Do is a great one as well. And then every John Maxwell book ever written is also awesome, but this one's the one that we're doing right now. Um, and this is the Developing a Leader Within You 2.0, but there are ones about leadership, influence, mindset, amazing. And he has one coming out for network marketers very soon. So I think it's July 30th. So that, though, just books, audio books, your, your um, car is a rolling university, constantly listening to things like that. Um, uh, Julie, do you have any books specifically that you'd recommend? So um, The Millionaire Mindset is an audio book by Lynn Hagedorn, who is a 
the top income earner or second top income earner. It's called the millionaire mindset. That is a complete game changer. And I honestly, I love that it's only an audio form because I think that sometimes you have to learn it, like hear it different ways. And, you know, we're talking about mindset today. And like, that is literally, that book is all about mindset. And honestly, when I am feeling I'm in a negative headspace around my business. There is this part of the book and you've probably seen it on Facebook or like posts or um, I feel like, I feel like I've seen people posting it recently where she shares this like story, you know, like if, if there was like a pile of boulders and under one boulder was $10,000, like you would literally, and this is in your backyard, you would literally move every single boulder. Like, and she's like, and you probably couldn't do it all in one city. You'd go out and you'd move a few boulders and then you'd come in and you'd have lunch and then you'd go back out and you would move a few more boulders. But in her whole point is like you would continue until. And that is the mindset that you have to have in this business because if you think that you're going to go out into the backyard and you're going to work hard and you're going to sweat and you're going to move a couple of boulders and your business is just going to explode, and you're going to find that $10,000. Like it just, that's just not reality. And I think that's such a good visual representation. So that book is for sure one I'm trying to pull. I was just trying to find in my living room, the name of this other book that I am like having a brain freeze that I can't remember the name of it, but I'll try to find it. Oh, exactly how to sell. It's, um, the name of the author is, um, it's pulling up on my phone. Phil Jones. It's called exactly how to sell. It's called the sales guide to non sales professionals. And here's why I like this book is because he talks about in that book in like one of the very first chapters, like why is it that two people can have the exact same product or offer the exact same service and one person is wildly successful and the other person is not. So if that resonates with you you're on this call or you're listening to the recording and you're like that's me like I can't figure out like why is someone else doing all this and enrolling all these people and I'm like struggling to get one person to enroll this book will help you because it's going to be a little bit of mindset and it's going to be a little bit of skills on what you maybe need to work on from a sales perspective um, and I love that it's called like the sales guides for non-sales professionals which is what we all I mean a lot of us if you never had sales background that's who we are so those are my two I love that. And you guys, the, the difference is um, between someone who hears these things, not only mindset, but it's that long-term vision and mindset. So if you hear, okay, no one's going to show up to my launch party, my launch party, whatever, and no one gets on these team calls or no one, and even speaking that out too, no one gets on these team calls. I never enroll business builders. I never enroll anyone. I can't make a consultant. It's those words that are coming out that's going to honestly build your business like that is how you're building it is with those words it's going to come into fruition so instead well i'll go at number one you need a long-term vision so truly are you just kind of half-assing it like like i i'm in i'm kind of in people can sense that people can feel that they feel the posture they feel the the confidence that isn't there and it is, it is definitely, you know, you borrow it for a while from people, but then and it, with the mindset and with the, the development, you gain that with listening to the podcast and Lynn Hagdorn's millionaire mindset is like a number one. I buy it for people when they first enroll. I'm like, you have to have this in your car playing every single day. Like I can't even if you can't, um, and, and with Michael Klaus, who's like network marketing. Yeah. So good. But, um, it's the long-term vision. And if you do not have one and if you don't really, I think that's just like a really like a main thing is like, okay, let's get that down. Are you not really willing, you know, to do what it takes? Like you're, it, it, you were building an actual business here. There are going to be ups and very low lows and very high, high, like it's, it's a business. So getting that long-term vision and taking people and telling people about that vision with you. And I know, Julie has something to even say about that with summer, you know, like, are we saying no one enrolls this summer? Go ahead, Julie, with that. Okay. So first, before we pivot to that, I just want to say like when you're talking about this long-term vision, 
that um, I will share with Meredith, or I could post it honestly in the group after this call, but Allison Matthews did a training at a Super Saturday in Minneapolis two weekends ago, or a weekend, two weekends ago, whatever. And it's a Simon Sinek video about the finite game versus the infinite game. And I am not gonna tell you the contents of the video other than to say that if you, if you are someone who is not in this for the PIB fees, if you're not in this for the quick money, you need to watch that video and when you watch it i want you to comment below so we, you can make that video go viral in the team page because this is all about infinite infinite has no end right there are seasons where you can invest more time in your business than others and that's great seasons happen to all of us it's part of life but if you start to view your business as the infinite game first of all you'll have a lot more joy Second of all, you'll start to see a lot more gratitude in your business and you will start to see growth. The finite game, when people get caught in the finite game, you guys, that's when they're focused on rank and advancement bonuses. That's when they're focused on PIB. That's when they're focused on winning a contest. There's nothing wrong with that if that drives you, if that's a part of what's gonna drive you to the infinite game. But when you're only focused on those things, the finite, you'll lose over and over again or you'll hit a rank and then you'll have no joy, no gratitude and you'll be like, ready to quit. Okay. So I think that's really important. So when Meredith and I were talking about mindset leading into today, today's call, I actually feel super passionate about this topic specifically related to the summer, because I don't know if you're new to isogenics or you've been around for a while. Um, but in, within the entire network marketing space, from the very beginning of when I started doing the business of isogenics, there was always this chatter about how business is slow in the summer and it's slow in Q4. And I think that it was coming from a place of trying to help you set people, like help, help people set their expectations for if their business were to go down. Okay. So that's great. But here's the problem when we start to say those things is that we actually start to believe that that's the reality and that's the truth. And that's the mindset that we have going into that space. So I want to tell you that my two largest business builders in my organization of almost 11,000 people came in in the summer months and they built both of them to executive in the summer months. And you want to know why you guys, because they both worked in school systems. They enrolled one in April and one in May. They had a little bit of a product journey and then they were ready to hit the ground running in summer is when they had to make it happen because they work in the public school system. And that is when they had the time. So I want you to think about what is your mindset when it comes to summer and building your business and how can we shift that? And Peta Kelly, in the many times that she's trained from isogenic stage, she always talks about like somebody else's story does not have to be your story. My story is not that summer is a slow time in my business. My story is that this time of year, more than anything, people need quick, easy breakfast solutions. They need reasons to stay hydrated, they need vitamins and nutrition and all of it. Maybe they're not gonna do a 30 day cleanse or you know a 30 day system, that's fine. But this is a time of year where people need our nutrition and there is this whole group of people who this is the time of year where they actually do have the time to build the business. Yeah, Caitlin says, how we speak affects exactly what happens. Yes, and that is what we're talking about today. That is mindset. That is why the conversation of summer mindset fires me up. One, because I had these two business builders that came in and they exploded my business in the summer. And two, we are taking someone else's stories and making it our own. And you get the chance to, on this call, make the decision that that is not going to be your story for the summer. So here is my first challenge, my first action item, and we'll kind of recap it at the end of the call. But I want you guys, after today's call, to think about who in your life is summer the best time for them to build a business? Because a lot of you are making excuses for people. Like you are assuming that they might not want to build it. Teachers, social workers, there are all sorts of people who have more time in the summer than any other time of year. I can't even tell you in the last um, probably six weeks, I've had several conversations with teachers in particular, who are all looking for part-time jobs for the summer, you guys. What if you could help them invest their time for the summer and that can continue to pay them all through the school year? I mean, you have to shift your mindset around summer with this business. This is a huge opportunity. And when we start talking about like, 
other teams or people doing other things. Now's your time to like double down on your consistency and focus on those people you can serve through the summer. And that will make the difference in your business. Yeah, I love that. And you guys, what you focus on expands. So writing it, like we say it all the time, write it everywhere, whatever. Um, I want to give you some practicals as well is, okay, so wake up with this thought, with self-thought. That's typically what people do is they're like, okay, self-thought. And gratitude. So making, how can I make a difference in people's lives? So let's talk about gratitude. Right when you wake up, you're like, I'm grateful for all these different things. And then um, it usually turns into prayer, right? Because you're like, grief, all these things, but Lord help me with all these things too. Like, you know, so gratitude and prayer first thing in the morning and praying that teachers come into your life. Like, Lord, like attract these things to me, bring these two things to me. Um, two is, um, so self-focus, who is on the calendar? Who is spending, who am I spending time with? Um, and who can I give a hundred percent to? today, all day, whatever. Like, so if it's teachers, my focus is teachers. I've got teachers, 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 or whatever, whoever like needs a second job, like in the summer, like all I know is teachers. I can't think of anything else. So maybe college students, if they're not school, like, so students, um, so the attracting that to you, who do you know? Who do you know? Who do you know? Who's a teacher? Who do you know? Who needs second income? Who do you know? Who's trying to, who's struggling? Who do you know? Who's driving Uber? Who does Instacart? Whatever. Um, so who do you know? So who is on the calendar, who you're spending time with. So for summertime, I know Julie and I were talking about this. I'm going to a pool party right after this for my kids. There's birthday parties, barbecues, pool parties. Um, there's baseball, like, um, so summer activities, picking kids up at VBS. You're going to be standing around with a bunch of parents. What do you do? What, what are you doing this summer? Are you traveling? Whatever. Asking these questions getting to know people. Uh, I was telling Julie that I was just at a birthday party. I didn't know the parents. I hung around on purpose and they asked me what I did. And cause I travel a lot and, but I'm home with my kids and kind of brought things up here and there. Isogenics came up. She was like, Oh, I definitely want that. Let's talk about it. Once I move, I'm like, great. Sounds awesome. So she has a huge family. All of them were there, got to meet them. So, um, being intentional too. So you're going out with the intention of making a friend, meeting someone, adding value. Um, do you want to say something about that? Yeah, I would. Like, I think that um, the most freedom I was ever given in my isogenics business was on a three-way call where somebody said, like, do your life with intention, right? Like, what are the things that are already on your calendar or what are the things that you love to do and do them outside of your home? And I know we've talked about this before, but you guys, everybody is waiting for someone else to say hi first. And all I'm saying is like, I get it might make you nervous, but like, if you have that infinite game mindset, we're not asking you to add a bunch of things to your calendar, especially through the summer, right? For a lot of us, our kids are home. There's a lot of things going on. What we're saying is use those times, use when you're out already, be intentional about getting into conversation, be intentional about asking other people's questions, and you will start to see those connections and those relationships grow. But you have to have some intention behind it. And I think there is a lot of freedom though in just saying like, where have you already filled your calendar and how can you use that to build relationships? Not to vomit isogenics on them, but build that relationship. But I'm telling you the number one best question you can ask somebody is what do you do? Because they'll tell you what they do and you'll be interested and ask them questions. And eventually they ask you that question back. And that is your opportunity to then intro what isogenics is to them. And the other thing I would just say is that if there are people on your list that you would love to have in your team, summer tends to be a really social time. If you have plans to go someplace or you're going to take your kids to the park or you're going to go to the pool or you, you're going to go to the touch a truck event at the library or whatever, think about an hour in advance who you can invite to go with you or meet you there. Because all those little things build those relationships and build that trust. And we know people do business with people they know, like, and trust. And you just have to be that person. And you can. It's just about intention. Absolutely. And serving people. So like having things in your place for people. So I'm doing this thing. I'm a former hairstylist and people ask me all the time, Hey, can you help me with tips about my hair? And I was like, why don't I just have an event in my house? I'll bring my personal hairstylist to my house 
everyone can get served and add value, but they get to know me better. I get to know them better. Their hopes, likes, dreams. So, you know, Kathy Hoover says form, family, um, recreation, occupation, motivation, um, you know, going along those lines, you know, and, and asking questions, being interested in people. And that's, that gives you more of an intimate time to do that, but you're also adding value and serving them. So find something that you're great at. I know Rachel's so good at like making up workouts, having, I had this idea for one of the girls on my team. I'm like, you need to have like, just, she's not even a trainer, but I'm like, have free workouts at the park and invite everyone's family to just play at the park and the moms can work out and you'll serve, we'll serve isogenics to the end. Like, why not? So think of ways that you can do that. I love that, Julie. Inviting kids to the, the movies, go to the movies with families and then bring like cut up bars in little Ziploc baggies for everyone. You're bringing the healthy treats. Your kids are drinking hydrate or whatever, because you know, the, you know, the movies wants to get you. And so just being intentional with that, like bringing sample packs, I keep forgetting, but bringing sample packs in the car, whatever, when you're going to the gym, so you can be like, here, here's a fun little pre and post workout here. Like, why not? You see those people all the time being intentional. I love it. Um, along with the books, just really quickly, it matters what's going in your mind. It matters what's going in your head. And especially if you live with like your biggest critic, like some of us do, you know, podcasts, music, um, and events matter surrounding yourself with the people who are going to lift you up, um, and push you forward and changing the energy of maybe what you're around all the time, I think is really important. And, um, he was, oh, I was like, well, I you? usually do, but Go ahead. do you have anything to add though? Julie? Oh, um, Hold yeah, on, it's one. usually me, but, uh, Okay. Do you? Okay, she doesn't. Okay, wait, we can't hear you. You're muted. Sorry. No, sorry. Um, can you just refresh me here? I got distracted by yeah. the... No, yeah. So I'm just saying, like, you know, I think it's really important, not just books, but events, um, surrounding yourself with people, like, with music. Yeah, what's going on? Like, up, uplifting stuff. And really quickly, you can, I just did this a second ago. Um, you can actually, um, like just go YouTube motivational, like speeches or whatever to just get you in the mood before you make a call. That's scary before you have an event. Um, you know, we do that all the time. I just listened to it. I believe everything I'm going to be posting in the group. It's having the executive mindset. Um, you know, we are all leaders. Executive is where the money's at. So when you can get the, um, the cycle match and everything like that. Like that is where it's at. So having the executive mindset, that long-term vision, like we're saying, so people are having the, the events, you know, you're getting, you're going to events, you're having the events, um, you're leading the calls, you're active in the group, you're doing the ice body challenge, not just talking about it, right? Integrity. Um, that's really important. So an executive state of mind. Yeah. And I think that, um, and Caitlin said it, she said power pose, rock out to your favorite song affirmation. So I will say that I actually had built a whole training module on finding your stage song, which was like a combination of finding your why and also like finding that music that's going to pull you into the right state. So Tony Robbins talks a lot about working from that state, like getting your like heart rate up, like getting your energy in the right place so that when you're going out to have conversations with people, you are in that state. And for me, music is that like trigger, like a, a good song can flip my mood from one thing to the other. And, you know, I love it in the isogenics world, like at the big events, like that, the big tra the main stage trainers, they all get to pick their own walkout songs. And I want you to like get yourself into that mindset where we're really like saying like, what is going to be your stage song? So that anytime that that song is played, when you hear it, when you're feeling down, you're going to flip that stage song on and it's going to bring you back into the state where you need to be. I will also say the game changer for me in this business was finding people outside of even my own downline, but if all the people that you know right now are within your own team, that's okay. And having those people on Voxer, because we all have dealt with critics. We all have dealt with haters. We've all have dealt with people that live with us that don't understand why we're spending time doing what we're doing. And you need that tribe of people in a more intimate setting. So the groups are amazing, you guys. But one of the most powerful parts about Isogenics events are developing relationships with people 
who are going to do what exactly Meredith is saying, which is on the days where it's hard, on the days where your uh, mindset is really challenging you, they're going to bring you back to center because they've been through it and they've done it. And Voxer and Marco Polo, I'm telling you, are lifelines to this business. If you don't have those people that are pulling you and surrounding you, then when you go to celebration in August, I want you to be so intentional about on every break, before and after every session, that you are introducing yourself to people around you, that you are finding people that are maybe going to be your one or two people that are going to be your tribe. Because my people that have been with me since the beginning, neither of them I'm financially tied to. Meredith and I are like a lifeline to each other on Boxer. We're not financially tied. And you have to have people that are going to pull you out. Podcasts are great. All of affirmations are great. Powerful are great. Music is great. All of that is great. But when you can have somebody that says like, Tasha, girl, I see you. I believe in you. You have everything it takes. Get the shit out of your head right now and like get to work. Like just, and you just need you know, those people, you guys. So that, those are my biggest tips. Absolutely. 1000%. She's preaching to the choir. You guys do it now do it now, like find your people, do it now. And a good question to ask at events is, um, I say, Hey, what's your story? Like, I just want to know, like, and I was talking to millionaires, had no idea. It's Kathy Savage's husband. I'm like, okay, that's cool. Um, and so you just ask people their story that maybe, and can we switch information? How long you've been doing this? You guys, it's everything. It's everything. It's everything. I boxer every single day. And I, I have people in the boxer circle who have, um, who are better than me. Well, not better. I don't want to say better than you. Just like, you know, higher level in income, possibly that you're surrounding, not like lower because unless you're running together, that's fine. But just that, definitely getting people who've gone before you and done the things. I think it's really, really important. Um, not better than you, but it's so funny that you said the lyric or the, the song thing, because before I didn't even tell you this, but before we got on, um, the call I was like, okay, like, what's the walkout song? And I was like, mine, and my kids and I talked about this for some reason, but I was like, mine's champion, Carrie Underwood. And like, I listen to that song over and over and over again to get you in the mood, to get you out of the funk. Because you guys, I have had two people not enroll with me last week and I was getting down to myself. I'm like, what did I do wrong? I am, something's wrong with me. Like, I don't know what I did. And I got a random enrollment from someone who enrolled with me seven years ago. She's like, hey, I'm ready to go. I was like, oh, okay. Go, okay, gotcha. And like that, so it came out of nowhere. But like the girls in the Vox were like, that happened to me. Don't worry, keep going, keep going, keep going, move forward. Okay, I'm gonna read you these lyrics really quick and I want you to let it sink in. This song and these lyrics, just by Ludacris, just the, the, the spelling out champion. The C is for courage I perset, per, the C is for the courage I possess through the drama. H is for the hurt, but it's all for the honor. A is for the attitude, working through the patience. Money comes and go. The M is for, for motivation. Gotta stay consistent. The P is, for, is to persevere. The I is for integrity, innovative career. The O is for optimistic, open and never shut. And the N is necessary because I'm never giving up. They see, they see, they ask me how I did it. I just did it for the heart crushing the competition, been doing it from the start. They say, they say that every champion is all about his principles. And you guys says, I'm invincible, unshakable, unstoppable, unsh unshakable. They knock me down, I get up again. I am the champion. You guys, you are going to be annihilated sometimes like by friends, family, things like that. You, you may completely shift your group of people that you hang around like it just with the mindset with the growth and everything you're gonna remove be removed from people who possibly have no dreams or drive in life and that is good that is good and people will be like my sister is one of them she's like i i you know i'm just sad that you're not the same person you were and i'm like wow that's crazy but then you look at what's happening with her and all she posts or negative things and cussing and this and that and whatever. And it's like, I'm, I'm just not that person anymore. I am just so beyond and that's okay. It's good. And I'm so glad that she has even like noticed that. Like, I'm like, great. Awesome. I don't expect to ever go back, you know? So I don't know that those lyrics are everything listening to that song. It's like, it really does bring you and lift you up. It changes your state and it makes you want to go make people over profit. 
You need to invest in people over profit, you guys. That is your vision, your long-term vision. You guys, what's our mission is to change lives, physically and financially. Make it not about you anymore. You were the person who needed the hero, and now you are gonna be the hero in somebody else's life and be able to pass that baton to develop and, um, and then empower them to go. Yes, I love that. It's exactly, yeah, Vavra. It's, it's so, I just listened to her right before this and me posting it in the group. Um, okay, so something else that John Maxwell said really quick was, if it's worthy of, or if it's worthy of pursuit, then it's worthy of declaration. So you need to um, put it everywhere, sp speak it out, shout it out, tell people where you're going. If you guys follow Laura Stevens at all, you know that she's told the story even before she was, had the glory. You know, she's like, I'm wanna, I want to free my family financially. I don't want to live in debt. I'm helping people, you know, even before she was helping people. You know, bringing people into, onto the rocket ship even before it takes off. Um, what else? Do you have anything to say really quickly before I look at this? Um, the last, the last kind of thing that I just wanted to touch on when we talk about mindset is that um, lessons in mindset are literally all around us, and it's easy to get yourself into a funk. And if you are a parent or if you work in a workplace, um, I want you to like really just like watch how mindset really impacts people. So if you, for example, work in a corporate setting and you're in a meeting and something negative is maybe said about the work that somebody else has done, watch the body language of that person change. My son plays baseball. He's in a, on a select baseball team. And this weekend they had a tournament. And it was like, I didn't know that we were going to talk about mindset today. Um, and it was like, God was giving me like a outside look at mindset and they they got crushed like I mean in a real bad way you guys on Saturday they lost two games by a lot they weren't even close and on Sunday they were playing a team that they already knew was better than them and those kids decided they were losing before the game started and in the first inning the, the other team scored five runs and they were done like they were done, like the game might as well have been over. And when we, when I think about mindset, I'm always going to remember that week, this last weekend. I just am because are you telling yourself it's over before you get started? And I love Marilyn's example about the girl who isn't sure she wants to have a launch party because she isn't sure if anyone's going to come. You guys, she's lost the game before she started it. And I think in so many times, and I'm so guilty of this to you guys, like I can come on and talk about mindset, but the roller coaster is real for all of us. It's just a matter of how fast you're going to go through the dips and back up. The roller coaster will always be there. And I just think it's so important to, to ask yourself if you have counted yourself out before you really started, or are you holding yourself back from the action that you know it's going to take to get yourself like your business to the next level because it's your mind holding you back. Not because you don't have the network, not because that you don't have the tools, not because you need to listen to another podcast or read another book, but that literally your head is what's holding you back. And from a leadership perspective, I will tell you the one of the hardest parts about this journey is when I have met people and they come into my team and they see the vision and they see the dream and this stops them. So lead with your heart, get the support that you need to work through the roller coaster faster. And remember those boys on that baseball field on Sunday who counted themselves out before they were even in the game. And don't allow that to be you. And if you are a parent, use that metaphor even to remind yourself that your kids are watching you and that that is a lesson that they have to face over and over again. And you can show them how you've persevered through it and we'll all be better for it. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Like I made a post about this on my Instagram about being a, like a team captain and like the whole goal of a team captain is to have people like not even think about the other team. We can do this. We're going to win. Come on guys, get in the game. When you're like, 
I mean, seconds from losing the whole game, but they've got to be the one to like transform that and, and turn it around and, and like convince them that, no, we can do this. The biggest thing though is action in that. So you can have that mindset and that's, you've got to have the mindset, but it's the action that you're going to take after that. So, um, I think of this with, and John Maxwell talks about with like putting people on a pedestal and we do this and that's why we don't message people. We don't message people because we're scared because you know, they, they are better than us and they are so much more successful than us. And uh, like, who am I to message them? And we put them on a pedestal. We, we already think that they've won in life and, and we're nothing and we have nothing to offer them. And oh, it's like just this thing. It's just this network marketing thing that probably won't free them. I don't know. Like, cause I'm like, I'm like barely making any money, you know, whatever your mind is saying to you. Right. And I want to challenge you guys to remove people from this pedestal and like judging people, you know, Lindsay Hopper is an optometrist. Um, you know, there's, there's dental hygienists, there's, um, lawyers, there are people who are ridiculously successful in stat, like in society's mindset. Whereas all I did was graduate high school. <laughs> all I did was, you know, go to beauty school and I couldn't amount to anything. Right. All right. Like I could get in my own head and you should have been in my head back then. They took a lot of work to move on to that, but like, and, and it's taken a lot of work to like, okay, I'm going to message this person. Okay. I'm going to, Okay, like they're probably gonna shut me down, but I'm gonna do it. And so, but, but it's so important to l even like let them have a say in if they wanna do it or not. Like, don't take that away from them. You've got to, um, I know Lynn Hagedorn says it in the Millionaire Mindset CD, she says, I would, I would look at those successful people and I would read the, the, the people who've gone before me and I would, I would live in that success and be like, that's going to be me and I will take that and I will use that confidence and I will, it gets you back in the game. So I guess to remove people from pedestals and I want you to go to them and say, hey, you're wildly successful in what you do. I know like that you are highly respected. You are someone that I looked up, look up to and, and you know what? I've been scared for seven years to share this opportunity with you because I just, didn't think that, you know, you'd want to do it. And how rude of me, because this opportunity has given me freedom and choice and freedom in my health. I mean, it has radically transformed my life. So who am I to take this away from someone as smart as you who understands an opportunity when one is presented to them? I would love to share this with you if you're open. Like that's literally it. That's all it takes. If they say no, fine. But I want, you got to be the one to just offer it to them. And I wanted to like kind of maybe end with it. Not, I don't know if we're going to end with this, but I wanted to share with this. Everyone is doing a side hustle. I don't know. I don't care who you are. I don't care what age you are. Like there's 70 year olds driving Uber. So I don't care who you are. Everyone has a side hustle. Why are you making the distinction that network marketing is so bad or whatever you want to spin, you want to put on it, taste you want to put on it. It is residual. It is different. Everyone, I have friends, teachers, in fact, who are doing Instacart, signing up for Instacart. They're going grocery shopping for people. Literally what Isogenics is, <laughs> grocery shopping for people um, and, and not getting paid residually from it. And they're, waste, they're trading time for money once again. So you need to stand up with the confidence and say, network marketing is the way to go, you guys. You know, you are going to share with them, hey, people are doing Fiverr, people are doing Task, task Rabbit, people are doing Uber and Airbnb. It's known. It is a thing. They're affiliates with, with um, uh, Amazon. And you guys, it's crazy how tiny Amazon pays you. Like, it's so little. It is so little. So with this long-term vision, you have to be bold about it now. You have to be bold because in the year 2020, I think it's going to be over 50% of people are going to be doing um, side hustles and sharing this with them. If you do not, if you're not bold about it, if you're not so proud about it, like, oh my gosh, making one cycle is residual income. You would never get that for sharing something from Trader Joe's with somebody. You will make $0 doing that. So you need to be so proud because we are disturbing 
the whole industry. We are shutting down Nordstrom's. We are shutting down um, Albertsons. We are shutting down those things. So talk about it. Talk about it with confidence and say, hey, especially with young people, you guys, especially with young people, because they are the ones who are going to college and will not be guaranteed a job in the field that they are in. It is not okay because we're disrupting it so badly. I get, we need to provide a solution for them. You are that solution. So I want you to go in it with this confidence and say, look, take a, take a big look at this. You are not investing an arm and a leg. You guys, this, I talked with some um, Monat people this past week and the confusion was with isogenics, we all get started the same way. Like I never, I didn't, invest a monthly investment to have a website. I don't invest, you know, to be a VIP business person. Like that's what other companies do. So be, be specific and tell them you guys, you just eat your overhead. That's it. Like, I'm not asking you to pay a special fee monthly to do a business. Tell them you guys, this one girl was like, but I don't want to do the business. I was like, Hey, you enroll 10 people. You're still not doing a business. Let's get your products paid for. It's the exact same way, but they don't know that because they've been told by other companies, you need to buy a thousand dollars worth of stuff. You need to ship it out of your home. You need to be a market partner or whatever that is to pay this thing. So they just don't know. Okay. And that's unfortunate because it does mess with their network marketing mindset later. But if you are open and talking about it and proud and saying, this is the way guys, this is the future guys. Let's go. Let's do this. Let me show you something different. Um, real estate agents don't get paid residually. They're always in the hustle. They're always on call. Okay. So if we can show them a better way, if you can just say, Hey, I made $54 while sleeping last night. It's pretty cool. Didn't really do anything. You guys be, be proud of it. Be excited. Um, and celebrate those little things and talk about it because that's what the teachers are needing. Um, I just found out someone I'm related to and only, and I don't want to say only, but like truly I got in this conversation with somebody in network marketing with myself. We both make a six figure income annually residually. And we were kind of not poo pooing it, but we're like, we, can, we need to be, you know, rank advanced. And her husband was like, did you just hear yourself? You said you make a hundred thousand dollars annually the network marketing when you just said your your family member makes thirty thousand dollars working 40 hours a week you know like that we need we need to help people and they need to understand there is more out there for them um but mindset is everything because they will quit because it's not easy because it's not security whatever the the things are gonna you're gonna get in your head it's you know, but it's fireproof. So it's all up to you. And what else do we need to say here, Julie? So just to wrap, okay, number one, if you've never done anything on mindset, healthy mind and body offered through isogenics is a great foundational place to start. So from a physical standpoint, from a mindset standpoint around your business, like it's just, it is like, it's kind of baseline if you've been through it, but like, I, if you've never been through it, like really consider it. It's, it's a low cost investment, you get your money back basically in a product coupon at the end once you complete it. So that might be something to consider if you're just kind of like new on your journey of like trying to grow your mindset. The second thing is I just want to remind you on like kind of the two action items that I'd like you to really focus on for the week, which is number one, to like make a list of the people that you know in your life that summer is a time where they have more time actually. So teachers, social workers, um, school counselors, um, People that are coaches for seasonal sports other than in summer. So like, um, you know, a lot of coaches that coach, you know, winter sports sometimes have more time in the summer. Students, um, you know, college students, Meredith mentioned, you know, there are a lot of people that seasonally end up finding themselves with more time in the summer. So I want you to think about who those people are in your life and really be intentional about connecting with them. And then number two is I want you to look at your calendar and really Take a look at where you're being intentional about connecting with new people, um, extending invitations for people to join you when you're going and doing things outside your home. Maybe you need to open up your home. That doesn't always have to be launch parties. It's, we're in the business of connecting with people. We need to get into more conversations. But look at your calendar and, and take a look at what's on there right now 
and think about ways that you can leverage that and be intentional about using it as a way as a connecting tool. Again, this isn't about spewing isogenics at people. This is about getting into good, intentional, connecting conversation with people. Um, so those are my really, my biggest tips. Meredith is right. We have to stand loud and proud about not only network marketing, but who isogenics is as a company and what we have to offer people. And we have to get our mindset around that because there's a lot of chatter. Social media can sound, feel like it's really loud right now, but we have to be willing to like rise above that and really stand in our own truth about what that looks like and what we have to offer people. And people are still looking for solutions. It's that we have to be bold and brave enough and have the mindset to find them. And my final thing that I wanna say is that when people enroll with you or maybe they are enrolling with other people and you are wondering why that happens. So I want you to consider that people wanna feel safe. It's like a natural, um, that we're born with that. It like happens when we're in the womb. There's just like this natural need to feel safe. So when we talk about mindset, part of that is like your mind around how you're serving people when they do join you or when you're prospecting them, giving them this sense of security and community and safety that you are here to stay, that you are committed to their success from a product perspective and a business perspective and getting your mindset in that place also, because I do find that when maybe two people are talking to the same person, it's either one person had a more, like a strengthened relationship, and that's why they went with the person, but this, this thing of safety and people wanting to be sure that they're enrolling with somebody who's in it for the long haul is really important. Um, yes, Caitlin, you can't fail till you quit. It's just so, so true. I'm gonna post that infinite game versus finite game um, in the T page. I want you guys to watch it. I want you to comment on it. I want you to tag people in it because if we can get the entire team, if we can get isogenics wrapped around this um, notion that this is about infinite game, this is about serving people from now until this is the Lynn Hagedorn of like continuing until you turn over the boulder that has the $10,000 in it. If we can start to focus on that, the right people are going to be attracted into that because we are making them feel safe secure and that we're in it for the long haul and not for the $50 product introductory bonus. So that's what I got. I love it. I'm going to leave you with um, these quotes from John Maxwell really quick. I believe there's enough for everybody, right? I believe that sowing is more important than reaping because you know, your reaping is going to happen, but sowing those seeds are more important than the reaping. Okay. That is critical because the sowing leaves the legacy. Um, and then have a yes, you can, um, like possibilities are endless. I can do anything. A yes, you can mindset, have it come out of your mouth all the time. So thanks guys for joining us. We can't wait to hear all that you do next week and all the parties you have set up and going to, um, make it happen, make it the best week ever. Thanks for joining us. Bye guys.